I see scholarly communication as really being an ecology that circles around moving our ideas about scholarship forward. For me, I use, when I'm talking with folks, I define scholarly communications as the system we use to make research and scholarship public. To me, scholarly communications are all the ways in which scholars communicate with each other and with the broader public population. They take many forms from the very formal to the very social. I use the uh, definition that the Scholarly Communications Institute at University of Virginia has developed or ad adopted, which is scholarly communication as the process of authoring, publishing, stewardship, and use of scholarship. So for me, it's a useful definition because it evokes all the different possible partners and uh, collaborations that scholarly communication involves. We know in our own profession it's come to mean or come to be associated with several different kinds of, of, uh, of things, uh, including the uh, movement for open access and advocacy for open access. It, uh, for a period of time, was strongly associated with issues of serial inflation and journal inflation. Um, and more generally, I think we've used it as a term to mean change. By adopting the term scholarly communication, librarians are talking about a new mode of information delivery in which they're not just uh, at one point in the chain. They've sort of become the central hub for information services on campus. And that means more than just um, collecting and curating, but it also means new types of upstream services, uh, such as library-based publishing, such as data curation and data management, things that are very much involved with the process of research themselves. We can go beyond supporting researchers in discovering and accessing scholarly information by actually getting involved in the knowledge creation business and changing the way new research is produced and shared. We can help solve the economic crisis in journal publishing by encouraging and supporting and providing incentives for the publication of open access journals. We're providing services to respond to needs that are impacting us and the ways that we can continue to provide access to good scholarship. And so we're starting to do things that aren't traditional, the libraries haven't done in the past, like publishing services and copyright um, consultation and having intellectual property lawyers working in the library. These are new things. And in order to, to provide those services effectively and get support for them, we need to explain why they're a library role. The transition to the digital environment for teaching and research has made copyright the all-encompassing environment in which the Academy now exists. Virtually everything we do now raises a new set of issues and concerns vis-a-vis -vis the rights and the exceptions in the copyright law. Libraries are increasingly obligated to assist with these questions in order to fulfill their traditional roles in the new environment as well as when they branch into new opportunities. We build technologies and create policies to publish and store scholarly output and by doing so we are aiding in the building of libraries digital collections. We work towards convincing people to add to these collections and we advocate for their use. And while we're at it, we're trying to figure out what parts of the communication processes to collect rather than just the final finished published output. For me, publishing is very much a continuum. It exists along um, a, a wide range of activity. It encompasses the book that you write in the humanities or the journal article you publish in nature or in science. But it could also encompass this video, which I'm recording this afternoon, or even the notes I've used to prepare this, uh, this, this recording. What happens if I want to make this, those notes accessible? What happens if the journal decides not to run this video and I want to make it accessible in some other ways? That's that informal side of scholarly communication, and that's the one that I've found myself spending more time thinking about. Libraries have traditional strengths in selecting, organizing, and preserving content. But we also have newer roles of teaching, training, and assisting researchers in using information technology. We can apply all of these skills together as electronic publishers. Today's web-based publishing systems offer the perfect environment for building collaborative partnerships with faculty and research communities within the university and around the world to improve the production and sharing of scholarly research. Whether it is in support for institutional repositories, electronic theses and dissertations, 
new open access journals created by our faculty members, or funding to ease the transition from traditional subscription-based journals to new models of peer-reviewed publication, libraries are and should be at the center of digital publishing initiatives. We're being forced to think more knowledgeably and more carefully about how we fund scholarly communication and also about what aspects of scholarly communication really produce the visible costs of publication. Um, for example, the work of peer review, the work of formalizing and productizing uh, scholarly communication into its recognizable objects like books and journal articles and conference proceedings. Open access really gives us some great opportunities, but I think um, for me it isn't, it isn't a kind of a religious position in the way I sometimes hear it from others. It feels to me like something we need to think about carefully, to be rigorous about understanding the costs of supporting it. Open access is obviously one of the major drivers behind libraries and information professionals um, in sort of exploring this new area. Um, I think the time is coming rapidly where we're going to see open access uh, to become the default expectation for campus researchers and this will be um, predicated at least in part by um, the, the increasing uh, pace of change in uh, the delivery of research results in, them, in and of themselves. These are the questions that drive me as the Associate Dean for Research and Scholarly Communication, thinking about what programs we need to have in place in our libraries that will help our community take advantage of the modes of distribution, the modes of preservation that we are either we either now have at our disposal or which we are creating, uh, take advantage of those so that research can be shared in ways that it had not otherwise been shared. We need to be thinking about scholarly communication in ways that are more interpersonal, more interstitial, more responsive, less institutionalized, and ultimately more focused on the communicative aspects of scholarly communication. The, the fact that we are communicating about something we care about, and the fact that there is a broad range of participants in this communication. The word scholarly communication um, really has become uh, the banner under which I think we can think about the new kinds of services and roles that we should be playing um, on our campuses. Scholarly communication really becomes um, the opportunity for us to have that conversation.